How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Science Mode. And today, I have embarked upon a grand journey. I believe the time has finally come for us to take a trip to the largest planet in the Kerbin system, that is Jewel. And the real life equivalent of Joule is Jupiter, and Joule is very similar to Jupiter in many ways. It's an enormous gas giant planet, it has several moons, its sphere of influence is pretty big, and the biggest issue, it's just way, way far away. So I am using this enormous launch vehicle to get uh, an even uh, well, a pretty large um, motor drive into space so I can get to Jupiter and I am using an extremely efficient engine it's not a nuclear engine I don't believe but anyway so the first thing I'm doing here what you saw right there was I used one of my atmospheric measurement devices that I unlocked from the tech tree last episode uh, to get some information from Kerbin's upper atmosphere and send that home the atmosphere analysis only works in the atmosphere so and for the majority of Joule, I will not be able to use those, but that's perfectly fine. Anyway, so the thing with the with the engine I'm using is it takes a really, really, really long time to get anywhere. And that's the way that real world engines work. Um, if you want to get, um, if you want to get places the most efficiently, you need to burn the fuel using an engine that burns it extremely slowly. Um, it's called specific impulse, and the way it works is, say, I have this engine with a specific impulse of, I believe, 350. So that means, um, just hypothetically, if I had one unit of fuel, and I used this engine to burn through it, then I'll be able to get 350 meters per second out of it. If I were to use another engine, I would be able to go a whole lot faster, but I'd only be able to get about 200 meters out of it. So um, the trade-off is that this takes a really long time to burn. As you can see here, this is four times accelerated and that maneuver mode, a uh, maneuver node is, you know, over 10 minutes long. So uh, you'll find out very quickly if you want to go to the furthest planets without using cheats, you're going to have to use nuclear engines and you're going to need to basically just let the game run itself. Ion engines are even more efficient, but my goodness, those take forever to burn. And I haven't even unlocked ion technology yet, so it doesn't even matter. So um, here, I, I basically, I lucked out in getting this maneuver um, straight to Jewel. Um, I don't have a calculator or anything to see when the launch windows are. I just guessed where Jewel was going to be when I would arrive, and it turned out to be basically exact. Uh, and here you can see me going all the way around Kerbin once to uh, this is just another way to maximize my um, efficiency um, It's easier to go farther out away from Kerbin when you're falling into Kerbin's sphere of influence and the gravity is pulling you down anyway It's called the Oberth effect And actually what I'm showing you here isn't even my first attempt to get to Jewel I last week uh, the reason there wasn't a video last week is because I recorded myself going to Jewel and then found out when I got there I didn't even put an antenna on the thing it got there perfectly um, this one did end up getting there I think a little more efficiently but it got there and I grabbed all my science from high Jewel and then realized oh I didn't put on an antenna and so what you see here I did that all over again the first time so yeah, uh, that was like an hour of gameplay wasted, so it really turned me off from doing that all over again. But uh, in the end, I decided, you know what, I'll, I'll do it again. And here I am doing it all over again. And the first thing I did was I put on an antenna. And that's another reason why I did the atmospheric analysis back on Kerbin, is because I wanted to make sure that I had an antenna, and if I got science, I could send it back. I got to send it back, so voila! Anyway, as you can see here, our Apple Apps is almost to Jewel. Uh, it's just going to be a bunch of fiddling around with the maneuver nodes from here on out and just trying to find the perfect approach to Jewel. I uh, want to get extremely close to Jewel. I don't want to fall into Jewel's atmosphere, at least not yet. I think I'll save that for the end of the mission. And, well, anyway, just the 
orbit insertion into a jewel um, uh, intersect, that was like a 15 minute um, burn, which I, uh, of course, uh, used time acceleration here to uh, put down for you guys. And after that, it took maybe another half hour to actually get to Jewel and finalize my approach, which you guys don't need to see. And through the magic of editing, I have uh, fast forwarded it to the point where we are about to go into Jewel's sphere of influence. And we're going to get a whole ton of science. We can get science from all of Jewel's moons. We can get science from Jewel itself. And um, it won't even be stick with this episode. But for this episode, let all me take over as we enter Jewel. Okay, first of all, I apologize for the background staticky noise. It is currently raining over here. But as you can see over there, that little green thing, that is Jewel. And this time... I have a transmitter on board right there, so I should be able to transmit all this data back. Let's start with the materials bay. We came, we saw, we did science, and we're still here. Very good. Let's go ahead and transmit that back. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So, um, of course, you can only do that once, but that's why I brought four materials bays. Okay, what else have we got? Let's go ahead and open the service bay and try a mystery goo. The goo seems to be moving more slowly here, almost as if it needed the warmth of the sun. Let's go ahead and transmit that. Uh, the thermometer. Let's log the temperature. Um, the R&D thing all over again. Just seen that so many times. I swear I installed, I, I even since the last episode, I installed another um, uh, public, serv um, public thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and observe the uh, pressure data. And instrument reads zero as if we're in the vacuum. Let's go ahead, transmit that back, and that's all of the science we can do. These don't work because we're not in an atmosphere. So now we need to get low over Joule, which again is right there, to get more science. And in order to do that, we're going to need to do some maneuvering. So I'll cut it here while I do that. So ironically, as soon as I had stopped recording that, the game crashed, so I had to do a quick reload, but we're here. We are now going to make our way to Jewel, which, as you can see there, has a lot of moons orbiting it. I'm going to bring myself as low down as possible into Jewel's sphere of influence. Um, and through my maneuver mode editing, I don't know if it's shown here yet, but I, I guess here's where I find out. I'll actually be passing over Lath which is uh, a very cool moon of Jewel because it has an atmosphere. So I'll be able to use one of my an atmosphere analysis probes on it. I don't know when I'll be able to do that because I'll actually need to be in the atmosphere to do that, but we'll see what happens when it gets there. As you can see there, I just got my lathe encounter, and that does mean I won't get my closest approach to Jewel like I had wanted, but that's fine. I have so much Delta V left, so much fuel thanks to that efficient engine. So we're up over Lathe. We're going to do as much science as possible here. Um, not even going to bother reading it because it's mostly stuff we've seen before already. The thermometer still reads the R&B thing. I have no idea why. Anyway, so we got some good stuff from high over Lathe. Now we're just going to try and get ourselves low over Joule. And at some point I realize I can actually put myself into orbit around Joule right now. Then I'll swing out to the Apoaps over the planet, and when I'm up there, then I'll go ahead and um, put my periaps down over, um, over Joule, just barely dipping into the atmosphere. Um, and in any case, I'm going to make my insertion burn right now. Um, I'm going to basically put myself into orbit around Joule and not much more. Uh, I could, I mean, I have the Delta V that I could put myself low over Joule and graze the tip of its atmosphere, but I really don't want to. It's way more efficient to just go out to Apple Apps like I'm doing here, um, drop my Perry Apps down inside Joule. The thing with Joule is it overheats your stuff very quickly, so I just want to barely like um, drip my nose into the very tip of the of the water, so to speak. Anyway, so I'm doing that here really quick, and that's where I'm going to have to leave this episode. So come back next time, and we'll continue our exploration of the dual system. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and stay tuned for more.